On April 17 this year, in Brooklyn, New York, the FBI arrested two men, Liu Jing Wang and Chen Jingping, on federal criminal charges for allegedly being associated with the operation of a Chinese police station in New York City. These are the first charges against more than 100 overseas Chinese police stations operating internationally, many of them without the permission of the country. The two men were apparently operating a police outpost for a security bureau from the branch of China's Ministry of Public Security. Other such stations have been found in Australia, France, Italy and dozens more from Angola and Uzbekistan. And what are their purpose? To engage in intelligence collection, rendition of dissidents and organising probes against regime opponents. It is an effort to collect critical information, influence global public opinion, and to shape the direction of foreign political policy. Everyone, of course, recalls the infamous Chinese spy balloon that collected critical military intelligence as it drifted across the United States to the dismay of the Biden administration. Chinese cyber attacks have also been responsible for some of the most intrusive breaches of US governmental robots, including a hack into personal files of millions of governmental employees in the Office of Personal Management. Many of China's spying and influence operations are much more pervasive and stealthy. While there is a growing recognition that apps such as TikTok are potential Chinese government tools of influence and espionage. With the ability to track keystrokes, use your phone as a surveillance device and collect biometric data, including face prints and voice prints, there's less awareness of the other tools at the regime's disposal. Beijing is also establishing cultural association, dominating Chinese language instruction schemes, buying private secondary education institutions, purchasing land near military bases, taking over Chinese community organizations, and eating up local Chinese language media. In, in December 2017, two different Chinese investment firms bought primary schools and at least one secondary school in the United States. Alarm bell went off in Australia after the government granted a 99-year lease to a government-adjacent Chinese company for the port of Darwin, where the United States has a 2,500 strong contingent of Marines and plans to expand, and it looks like similar efforts are happening in the US. A good place to start is with the numerous overseas influence organisations that are controlled or sponsored by the Chinese Communist Party. Influence agencies active in the US include the China-US Exchange Foundation, the Chinese People's Association for Friendship with Foreign Countries, the New York-based China Institute, and the US branch of China General Chamber of Commerce. A Newsweek investigation found 600 such organizations in the US alone. In some instances, these organizations both perform the apparent role and more hidden ones in the service of their superiors in Beijing. Such roles have been included identifying potential sources of technological information, commercial spying, in short, as well as pinpointing and threatening those that oppose Chinese political views. Another important arena is with China's talent recruitment efforts, a reverse brain drain program that seeks to encourage Lua, both Chinese nationals and foreigners to the mainland to work in critical tech areas. The Thousand Talents Think Tank aims to hold data on 12 million sea scientists including 2.2 million ethnic Chinese scientists and engineers, according to an Australian Strategic Policy Institute report. In Australia and Canada, much the same has happened. Before the consequent impact on the breadth of views offered to large and growing Chinese language populations, there are an estimated 3.5 million Mandarin or Cantonese speakers in the US, about a million in Australia and 1.3 in Canada. Nor is Beijing dominated Chinese language media simply about sanitizing views of the mainland, pushing for a more positive foreign and economic policy towards China to pumping up pro-Beijing politicians. Beijing-dominated Chinese language media is doing its best to shape their views of millions. Universities are not the only educational institutions where Beijing has sought soft influence. Around the country, public school systems have introduced Mandarin language classes that few parents are aware of, that are underwritten by the Chinese Communist Party, funded at least in part by the Chinese government, the New York-based Asia Society channeled money to multiple school systems for Chinese language classes. I mean, is it a really big deal if Westerners are learning Chinese? It would suggest that learning Mandarin, even if funded by the Chinese Communists, is a bad thing. 
and school systems across America have been more than eager for the free labour and the expanded curriculum, even if the teachers are imported from the mainland. That, however, is the magic of such efforts. Not all have an immediate payoff. Instead, China is gradually building its soft power and influence across the Western world. Even China has been buying US farmland at a record pace. Recently, a Chinese agricultural company bought 300 acres of land close to the US military base in North Dakota. The plant is one minute drive from an Air Force base that, according to a North Dakota senator, John Hohen, hosts a space mission that will form the backbone of US military communications across the globe. What should the US or other Western countries do? Obviously, not every Chinese citizen or investor is conspiring with Beijing. However, the increasing influence is concerning. But as Xi tightens his grip over all aspects of the Chinese government's people and economy, it's increasingly difficult to afford even the most benign seeming efforts the benefit of the doubt. The Chinese law is explicit in saying that all individuals and companies are obligated to share information with the government. Experts explain that every PRC company or offshore investment or organization can be tapped at any time to do Beijing's bidding. In the meantime, the Chinese Communist Party is building leverage and often building relationships of dependency that can be used to inflict harm down the track even though it may look harmless for the time being.